trying to speak through the radio that we have with us. Murder, poltergeist and ghostly apparitions await the most haunted team in the USA. USA. Today we welcome you on board one of the world's most famous vessels. For years the pride of the ocean, but now a home to poltergeists, ghostly apparitions and the hundreds of souls who lost their lives at sea. And with so many thought to still roam here, I had to bring you to the Queen Mary. For 30 years a British icon, but now an American tourist trap. The ship made its 1,001st and final journey across the Atlantic, landing in Long Beach, California in 1967. Once a luxury liner for both royal and refined guests, she served her time in World War II by ferrying Allied troops as well as German captives. Known at this point as the Grey Ghost, she also escaped Hitler's attempts to sink her. The leader may have offered the Iron Cross and a small fortune to his wartime bombers, but it was Winston Churchill who had the satisfaction of walking aboard in May 1943, sharing his trip to New York with 5,000 prisoners of war. Peacetime returned, and so too in 1947 did the ship's passenger line service. But by 1966, the Queen Mary was up for sale, and in July the following year, Britain lost a national treasure as a bid was accepted to take the vessel to its probable final resting place, Long Beach, California. First open to guests in 1972, the Queen Mary still stands tall as a hotel, restaurant and museum to the many memories that are held within its walls. They say that the Titanic was the ship of dreams, but this ship, the Queen Mary, this is a ship of ghosts. We're talking of a ship that has contained memories of so many people for nearly 70 years contained within its metal cladding. We're talking of a ship that probably has more ghosts on it than any other ship in the world. And we're talking of the sixth most haunted property in the whole of the United States. Here in the first class suite area, the ghost of a man wearing a 1930s suit has been seen many times by tour guides and guests alike. But it's not just here in the corridors that he makes his presence known, it's also in the bedroom areas. Lights turn themselves on and off and many passengers have heard heavy breathing and in the dead of night, many people have actually felt the bedclothes being pulled off them. In 1939, only three years after she was launched, she became a troop ship conveying troops both American, Canadian and British. And not only that, but she also took a great number of prisoners of war, some of them in very poor condition, and many of them, of course, died on this ship. This ship had approximately 55 deaths that we know of that are recorded, 16 crew members, 38 passengers, and nobody knows how many soldiers, airmen, prisoners of war also died on the ship. So we have a ship that is very, very haunted to say the least. It is said here in the Queen's Salon that the ghost of a woman wearing a white long flowing gown has been seen dancing all on her own to an unseen orchestra. Also strange globes of light have been seen floating across the floor. The best bit of the whole of this ship, um, every ghost hunter's dream is on B deck, room B340. Every corridor on the Queen Mary has a story to tell and this one is no exception because it leads to the infamous room B340. Uh, the whole place of course is a hotel and for a hotel not to use one of its rooms means an awful lot of loss of revenue but B340 is never used for guests. And this is it. It's on the third level and it's thought to be the site of a gruesome murder. It's no longer rented out because of the strange disturbances that have plagued crew and guests alike. 
strange dark shapes, odd noises, laughter and screams, poltergeist activity are said to be prevalent in this very unwelcoming room. So many guests, when they did stay in it, fled the room in the middle of the night, came to reception and insisted on being moved to another room because of the ghostly goings on. Someone definitely died under very mysterious circumstances in that very room. At one time, she actually took 18,000 troops on a trip from Canada to England. It was the biggest amount of human beings in a vessel ever in the history of the world. With so many souls, so many deaths, and so much emotion contained within these metal walls, no wonder this ship is as haunted as it is. It is reputed that there are over 600 ghosts on this ship. That's why we're here for three weeks to investigate it. So are we dealing with the world's most haunted place? It's a claim that the team often hear, and the enormity of our task isn't lost on Kieran O'Keefe. Furthermore, the parapsychologist is definitely pleased that this investigation won't be condensed into a mere 24 hours. Kieran, we're on the Queen Mary. It's absolutely enormous. How does this compare to some of the other investigations that you've been on? Not just on Most Haunted, but for yourself personally? Well, you're right to say the ship is enormous. We're on a ship that's over a thousand feet long. You walk around it four times, it's a mile. So we've got a place where there are a lot of previous eyewitness testimony. Um, it's a huge place to actually even start an investigation. And this is why I'm so thankful that we're here for a period of three weeks, because it means we can actually do a thorough investigation. Apparently there are hundreds of ghosts here. So many people have seen so many different kinds of apparitions. Do you think it's possible because uh, the ship is still sort of uh, looks as it did in the 1930s? Yeah, we've got a location here that is only 70 years old. When you compare that to previous most haunted locations, it's quite a modern location. Location. However, a lot has happened on this ship. We've got a GI history in terms of the Second World War. We've got a history in terms of leisure cruises, that sort of thing. And I think you're right, the interior is still the same as it would have been 70 years ago. So maybe there's an issue where the ghosts are still going through their daily activity. In addition to that, there have been a lot of traumatic events associated with Queen Mary, and maybe a lot of the paranormal activity is associated with people that have died under traumatic circumstances. What is truly unique about this investigation is that it lasts for three weeks. Now, this is certainly a first for Queen Mary in that we've got three continuous weeks of investigation, but it's also unique, I think, in television history to have that period of time. In addition, there have been several of the crew here a week before that, so we're talking literally about four weeks of investigation. It's an ideal opportunity to monitor the situation, to have people sleeping in certain rooms that are haunted. It's, it's going to be great. And it's great because it's never been done before. Exactly. This is indeed a unique opportunity in our extensive search for conclusive proof of paranormal existence, and we expect to collect up to 100 hours of footage. The Queen Mary may be one of the youngest places that Most Haunted has explored, but early expectations are that this could be the one location that will take us closer to life after death. Once the pride of Britain's ocean fleet, the Queen Mary has spent the last four decades in Long Beach, California. However, for three weeks, one group of ghost-hunting Brits have come to see just how haunted this modern-day hotel really is. But despite the surrounding sunshine, spiritualist mediums Derek Okora and David Wells were more interested in unearthing as many of this ship's astral energies as possible. Now all aware that our biggest and boldest investigation lay ahead, Most Haunted was ready to step inside the Queen Mary. This 
is stunning, isn't it? Oh, it's absolutely beautiful. Absolutely. You know, just as we come into this atmosphere, this lovely big room, big room, and what have you, and um, the energies um, that are actually still fresh here, uh, and it's not just the residual energies, right up to this present day, time, maybe hours, I don't know, it's like as if what's left here and we've walked in on it is the energies of a lovely, lovely lady, an absolute beautiful, kindred-hearted lady, a lady that actually moves through these rooms with grace, and um, it's like as if she's... Um, when she moves here, it's like she seems to be preoccupied. She's got something on her mind, and she's moving to do something. Um, and I feel her energy is thick and fast here. So she must have stayed in this suite, slept in this suite, um, and um, was accustomed to it. Um, I feel a stately lady, a lady of war. Um, can we, do, maybe we're going to get, could we move slightly yeah, and maybe sure. we'll get more as yeah. we walk along into, into this here. room? Yes, yeah. please. She did not lose her life um, um, in, in an easy way. Um, she certainly didn't lose her life by murder or suicide. She, um, the reason why she comes back here um, is because she so enjoyed this suite. You know what I feel about her? Is if there was more than one occasion, it was like on a regular occasion, this lady would have this suite. Right. And she felt as if it belonged to her. And in her visitations, this way she spent many, many happy days, hours, mm -hmm. and whatever, and that's what brings her back. Okay. What was her name? I got Lady before, I was just... Right. Okay, Sarah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Lady Sarah, come on, Sam. Lady Sarah, it begins with B. Come on, put it in my mind. I'm sorry, but I'm getting Lady Sarah, and the initial B begins the same. Okay. This lady, can I just say, she's very gracious. She's, she's a lovely soul. Yeah. She throws out lovely feelings. She's not here to hurt on, even alarm people. It's just here through the joy that she experienced many hours in this, in this room, and she felt um, you know, it was like a second home. Mm. That's Lovely. the way I feel about it. Oh, that's her. nice. I'm going to be scared in here then about No, that. no, she's so sweet. Brilliant. These first class cabins were known to have attracted worldly and wealthy clientele, but with few passenger lists still in existence, we cannot state for certain if Lady Sarah B did treat this room as her second home. Derek's description of a graceful environment may not last long as three levels below the promenade is B-Deck, home to the infamous room B340. The immediate feelings in here, uh, if it's, um, it's like as if I want to turn my back to it because this feeling's building with me in here, right. the feeling of um, anger as well, great anger, uncontrollable anger. And yet the two of them, the disgust and the uncontrollable anger, are separate to each other. And what I mean by that is um, I feel as if I've got... It's like saying someone, a person in this room, a spirit person, um, going round, uncontrollable, a feeling of anger, screaming, shouting, and just totally uncontrollable. And I don't understand quite why, but I'm also I'm with the feeling of disgust as if I get this like struggle in here. More than one struggle, but it's a struggle, struggles, and an overpowerment. And the overpowerment is male with female. And it's like as if he's beaten her and beaten her into like a submission. Do you think it's stronger over here as well in this particular room? Uh, most definitely this area. Most definitely this area. So it's stronger over here? Yes. Okay. And um, this room really um, needs cleansing. It really does, spiritually cleansing. Did he, did he work here or was he a passenger? I feel he was a passenger. Right. Um, and he was a, a passenger of means. Um, and he, he thought he could get away with doing this. Right. He was deranged, deranged in this room. You know, like a madman? Yeah. Absolutely, because it's still all in this atmosphere. And it rant and raving going round it. And it's like as if the doors, he's rattling on the doors, and he's yeah. trying to get out, but he can't. He's, it's like he's locked in. I'm also getting um, uh, 
gas. I feel also, if in some way, um, his energies would have dispersed in this room, um, heat, uh, and intolerable heat, and also no oxygen. Um, and it's like as if he was locked in a tomb or locked in um, the room so he couldn't get out. What, you mean so he was imprisoned in here? Yes. I feel that's what happened. I know it sounds crazy, this, in but... In this room? In this room? I feel in some manner he was locked in and, and, and he went just absolutely crazy. I feel... I, it may be, I don't really know with this, but the energies are suggesting that someone was covering him up, protecting him, placed him in here, OK, completely. Yes. Um, apart from what he'd done in here. Yeah. And kept him in here. And it's like as if he perished in here. Um, he lost his life. Mm. OK. Although the intense, oppressive feeling that many feel in this area is actually nearer to the door, Derek had established that some sort of unease existed in here. But could we determine who this could be? We decide that room B340 is an area that David Wells must also visit. I'll tell you what I, I feel here. I feel actually like the, uh, the bottom of the jacket's been pulled and been pulled into the room, forced into the room, rather than... Coming in, oh, right. so someone's tugging you in. Come in, yeah. Really? It's more of a more of a, a pull into the room. I'm hearing in this room um, as well audibles, and it's kind of um, it's it's a real mixture of sounds, but they're all they're like screams. It's almost like there's a the word that came into my head wasn't murdered; it was trapped. Someone's been trapped in here, and I can't. Sh I'm trying to. I'm trying to shake all the debris off it, and I keep coming back to a child. Right. I think I'm going to go with a girl. Feels like a girl, little girl, um, and it's just not. The images aren't pleasant at all. Do you know what it feels like? It feels like her head has been slammed against the wall. You know, it's really a hideous image. It's like a like a child, like a rag doll, like slammed against the wall. Almost picked up by her feet and whacked. Oh, God. It's awful. So that's probably why yeah. it feels a little bit upsetting. How old would the girl have been? <clears throat> she's, she's tiny. I mean, she couldn't be any more than... Um, I would put her around four or five. I wouldn't put her an old child's not. Mm. She's, she's tiny, tiny mm. little thing. And is it active in here by this male? It's like a whirlwind. That's the best way of describing it. Like a whirlwind. So he would cause that kind of, if you were in here, if, they, if this was a fully functional place and you were trying to sleep in here, it would be like trying to sleep with some kind of Tasmanian devil in the room. Right. It would right. be impossible. So it's an analogy, basically, you're still getting that he's got mental health problems or he's deranged. Yes, yes. You're still yeah. getting that sense. Yeah. Right. yeah, absolutely. So the girl, so the little putting... girl's not haunting here, but it's, it's the man. I think the little girl may be present. Mm. I've actually seen a couple of times children up and down there yeah. in Astral Children, but I, you, know, you just never know, do you? Yeah. And any absolutely idea impossible. what the relationship is between him and the little girl? I would instantly say father and daughter. Okay. You know, instantly say father and daughter. And what's the time period when this murder would have taken place, do you feel? Instantly, they put in my head 50, so I guess right. 1950s. Would we have known about this, or is this, is this something that was hidden or covered up so we didn't know? There's something about um, his status, the word status, so I presume they mean that whatever his position in life, he's not nobility, he's not royalty, he's none of that. It seems more to me that he would be involved with the Cunard, that, that, the, the, you know, the owners. It seems more of an ownership thing, that it was all hushed up. Would he have but died here? No, it, no. When I say hushed up, I don't mean he got away with it. Right. I actually don't mean that. No, but um, we just didn't know about it. Yes, basically. <clears throat> he didn't get away with it and he was, he was dealt with. And the, I think what they're trying to tell me is the murder was reported. Now... <clears throat> The word Southampton's coming in, so it would have been on that leg of the journey if this if the ship was going between back to Southampton. Um, the so the word Southampton was very clear to me, so he would have been removed that end. Who was that? Who side then? Who side? Mm -hmm. I heard it over here, but uh, I heard it, so I'm yeah. it was quite a strange thing as well. It was a really. Stuart didn't say. I didn't say. No, it wasn't Stuart. <coughs> it was. I thought it was actually in the corridor. 
To be honest with you, I thought it was out there in the corridor, but there is another door there. Did so, anybody sigh but, yeah. out there? I thought I heard it, and I no. thought it was in there. It was a real... <sighs> yeah, it was, definitely. Um, the, so the word Southampton was very clear to me. So he would have been removed that end. Who was that? Who sighed then? Who sighed? I think this room um, has the worst energy. B340's walls are thought to have once witnessed murder, but this latest sensory perception was as surprising to hear as it was shocking. Had a girl lost her all too brief life in this oppressive atmosphere? These sleeping quarters may now remain out of use, but not to us. A few days later, Richard Felix bravely volunteered to stay here on the night preceding our first set of vigils, only to have his sleep rudely interrupted by a series of disturbing events that were recorded using Kieran's laptop computer. throwing coat hangers. Um, it seemed to come from, I don't know, it seemed to come from the door. phenomena that was caught on tape. This area of the ship is abandoned and no other passengers or crew were in this area during Richard's sleepover. So who or what had made their presence known to the most haunted crew aboard the Queen Mary? Not <laughs> The most
Household crew are enjoying a little ghost hunting Californian style. Our base for three weeks is the former passenger liner, the Queen Mary, where our minds were still overwhelmed by the phenomena recorded in room B340. Kieran's analysis of this remarkable footage remains ongoing and as yet without conclusion, but each viewing still seems as mystifying as the first. And what of this frightful sound? Have we just recorded a young child calling out for their mummy? And how closely could we link this auditory phenomena with our psychic's previous readings here? It's like saying someone, a person in this room, a spirit person, um, going round, uncontrollable, a feeling of anger, screaming, shouting, and just totally uncontrollable. Someone's been trapped in here, and I keep coming back to a child. Hi. I think I'm going to go with a girl. There's like a girl, little girl. How old would the girl have been? She, she's tiny. I mean, she couldn't be any more than... Um, I would put her around four or five. Stunning and chilling documentation that prepared us for the vigils ahead. And one of the first took place in the Queen's Salon, a former first-class ballroom that David had earlier visited and where a lonesome lady is often seen on its dance floor. Yeah, I've got an astral woman. Mm -hmm. Now, she's very slim, very elegant. She is, um, she's given me a name which sounds like Estelle. But the odd thing about Estelle is that she's dancing here, but without a partner. She's not a, she's not a happy dancer. You know, she's not dancing for the joy. It's like a, a huge sadness for, for that loss. And I actually feel, I feel quite emotional talking about her, I can sense. You know, there is a huge broken heart here, but it's only, only, it's trivialising what this woman felt for him. But it is, essentially, so he just left her? Shipboard romance. Ah. Oh. That, that was it. But of course, in her mind, it was much more than that. Oh, that's so that sad. That is very sad. I just wonder how, how if, you know, if we do vigils in this room, hmm. how she'll show herself. It'd be really good if she did show herself. Further proof, it seemed, that the ship plays host to many repeats of the fun-filled voyages that thousands once enjoyed, but also appear incapable of forgetting. So, having already sensed one particular active astral in here, we wondered if our lonely female would welcome a visit from Kath, Alex and Stuart. I think if we just stay silent for a couple of minutes yeah, or so... Yeah. And just we sit on the floor? Yeah, yeah and just, just see what happens, I think, eh? Hey? Here. Yeah. In the middle. Can you go off and see? He's always going to think they're nutters. Oh, I'm aching all over. Did you hear that? Oh, I'm aching all over. Did you hear that noise? Yeah. See, I've just caught a really strange shadow then. It was almost as if one of you guys stood up. Oh, really? God, I swear I could see Holy shit, there, did you hear that? Oh, yeah, I did hear that. Oh, really? God, I swear I could see Holy movement shit, over there, did you hear that? Oh, yeah, I did hear that. Pull one of those curtains to one side if you can, um, Kath. I know, they go on forever, don't they? Here you go. What's behind there? Doors. Is it a door, that? It is, isn't it? I think it's probably locked in there. So. Who's that? What's happening, Alex? I don't know. Put your, put your thing down, because you... Hello? Anyone there? Is, is, anyone, is anyone... We've got a lot of interference going on now. We'll be talking all of a sudden. We've just heard three loud bangs, so...
Can we have a look at the walkie talk for a minute? I saw some really strange lights up there. Oh my god. That shouldn't be happening, that. It shouldn't. Yeah. I just saw some really, really strange lights. Yeah, it shouldn't turn. Where? Why did you see them? It, it, almost like they were dancing up I'm here. Really frightened, do you know? I'm not going to turn this off. The minute we pulled back the curtain, it was the walkie talkie. It was, wasn't it? Yeah. What would curtains have to do with it, though? Is that lead leads? It's almost like disturbing. It was yeah, almost, disturbing yeah, it was almost like we disturbed something. If you are here, could you please do something for us? Could you make a sound? Could you open one of the doors? Could you shake one of the rattle one of the doors, maybe? Open a curtain. You're not gonna believe. What? Just, I've, just, I've just seen the red light. Well, there's the sensors. No, near no, the fireplace. Hmm. No, not to say. No, I saw something there before. Next to the fireplace. Well. I thought it was my eyes playing tricks on me, but I saw something. It will happen in a split second, so. These were distinct footsteps and bright lights that not only sliced open the still darkness, but also these crew members' senses. Yet the incessant interference that came through via the walkie-talkie was disturbing. Three decks below lies the Queen Mary's notorious room B340, certainly not the environment that I would want to visit after dark, particularly after hearing of Richard's violent disturbances the night before. Still unsure of what had caused these events, I hope that the added assistance of Kath and Rachel would help keep any obvious anxiety at bay. Have you touched me? I'm not kidding. No, obviously, I haven't I'm not kidding. Moved. I thought you were. No, I'm not touching that's me. That's how far away I am. You're touching me like that. Somebody's just touched me on my arm. What's that? What was that noise? I don't know. Touching me like that, somebody's just touched me on my arm. What's that? What was that noise? I don't know. I'm touching you. No, I'm touching you now. I can't do this, I can't come in here with me. <laughs> Is there somebody in here with us? Shall I sit on that bed? It's up to you if you want to. Because well, it's like when people are asleep, things happen, don't they? I really want to sit in this bed. <clears throat> Do you know the good thing about? I think we should all sit on the bloody bed. Please, 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 please try and show yourself so we can catch your image on camera. Imagine how much hope you would give to them if you were to show yourself on camera and it would be recorded forever. We would not have to. <laughs> Try and speak through the radio that we have with us, so I can see a shot of it. Has that just gone up? No, I, I did turn it up. Yeah. Now, just to explain, that radio has come on on its own like that. Shouldn't be doing that. No, it just there's it's no just reason. Like, it would normally if somebody presses it, it goes me. How weird. If there's anybody here in this room, try and talk through this radio. If you can hear the sound, try and use that energy. Try and talk to us. Say hello. Huh? How weird. How weird it just stopped. That's really, really very odd. Oh, I do not understand that. That is really freaky. 
exactly what we'll do. So none of us are touching it. So let's stick it up there until we leave. I mean, maybe we need the, um, you know, the sound, the proper sound, um, like John, the sound equipment, you know, to see what kind of. It's good us getting a feel for it though, isn't it? Mm. Time in this usually abandoned area had sent shockwaves through our investigation team. And in true chivalrous fashion, the crew's male contingent thought that they would provide the answers. Little did they know what they were letting themselves in for, as our stay on board the Queen Mary was about to take a major turn for the worse. a dozen deck levels on board a ship that once held thousands. The early stages of our investigation of the Californian docked Queen Mary has certainly given credence to one of the USA's purportedly most haunted sites. Separate vigils in the Queen's Salon and room B340 have produced a separate series of mystifying phenomena. From ghostly shadows and distinct light anomalies to reactive auditory outbursts, we really were thinking that this could be a venue that was open to our appeals for paranormal activity. And despite feeling a little uneasy, we had so far felt fairly comfortable in our vast surroundings. I'm uh, in the foyer of the Queen Mary and I'm, uh, I'm off on a vigil and um, some of the many ghosts and spirits that are actually here on the Queen Mary aren't necessarily confined to rooms, cabins, but actually walk the decks. So I'm going to see what I can find outside. With Richard off on his travels around A deck, it left Carl, John, and Stuart one level below. But no sooner had they reached room B340 than their fears came flooding to the surface. This this room freaks me out. I'm not good. Did you hear that? That came from where the bathroom is. I just heard another noise. The noise came from the bathroom. Shh. That were yours again. Is anyone here? You take that, take that, I need to sit down. Okay. What, I said what? You okay? Yeah, I'll take your time, John. It's very weird that you, read, that you feel... That, that, that you feel... I'm oh, tingling all over. You think of the number of people, mainly happy, that have wandered up and down these corridors. And ghosts are seen. Of course they are. What's up, mate? Are you, are you okay? Oh. Show yourself. Carl, sit down. Sit down on it. Oh. Just sit oh, down. Just, just sit down. Forget the shot. That doesn't matter. Oh. Is there anyone here? Who is yes. it that's making you feel tingly? You alright, mate? Hey? Oh, man. Sit. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, God. Yeah, I'm fine, mate. Don't worry about me. Oh. Don't worry about me. I've got to get out. Oh, God. I 
give me five minutes. Okay. Oh, Carl, Carl. I need me here. No, I'm sorry, I'm staying. Mate, you shoot off. Carl, do you want a camera? No, I'll leave it. Oh, man. This place is weird. I feel tingly. I don't want to stand here. I just don't want to stand here. I just feel like there's something there. Just look at the expanse. Just look at it. Shades of the Titanic or what? You OK, mate? Susan got out of please. Good. Was it heartburn? Was it like a heartburn feeling? It's like someone <clears throat> grabbing me and just squeezing like a vice around my chest. Just squeezing, Squeeze. squeezing, squeezing, squeezing. Was it scary? Was that? Was yeah, it? I couldn't. I couldn't. It was claustrophobic. I couldn't move. I couldn't. I couldn't stop it. I just had to get out. And wow! Then, and how the, how do you explain that? How do you explain that? And how do you explain the fact that I suddenly, and my voice was suddenly felt. I felt like a little bit of pressure on my voice box. I felt tingly. I felt like I wanted. First of all, I wanted to scream. When I walked in here, I wanted to scream. I felt like something's in me, in here with me. And then I started getting afraid. And then I started feeling really. I don't know. And that's all within about two minutes of being in here. But when you started to say you didn't feel like yeah. I've, I've got my headache in this room. Yeah. But surely if there is, what's the matter? I have to start something go across the screen. Oh, <laughs> What, 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 what? What? Did you just spin your, um... He hasn't moved. He hasn't moved. I saw, I saw, I saw um, it wasn't just a light, it was a line of light above Stuart's head. And it was weird, it's almost like someone shot it out from, from out here. But it, it, it went straight over Stuart's head. I wish I I'm going on goosebumps now. Well, that, this is what I said before when I was talking to Carl and you felt dizzy mm. or whatever it was and you were sat down in the chair. I actually saw a, a white light in this room, like someone had switched a torch on and off very quickly. There you go. One of the many famous people that sailed on this ship, no less than Spencer Tracy. That just f***ing moved. That Holy just moved. shit. What moved? That f***ing door. Don't, I'm I, I, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't breathe. Moved. I really cannot breathe. <sighs> My eyes are watering, I'm not scared now. You're there, show yourself. There can't be anyone in there. Why would there be anyone? No, 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 I know, I know. I don't... I'll tell you what, it is exciting when you're with people and we're trying to... It is exciting when you're with people and we're trying to... Luckily for me, not a ghost. Better luck next time. So no joy around a deck for one investigator, but one floor below, any attempts at glass divination were disrupted before they'd even begun. I'm not moving that car. Oh, his legs are, have not moved, and I can vouch for those. I, I've just looked at I, his legs. Honest to God, moved. I have not moved that table. You promise? Promise. His legs have not moved, John. I look, as, soon as, that, as soon as that went, there was no movement on that side. Not that I'm saying you would have done anyway. Take the camera. Right. I'd like oh, to yeah, stay. Yeah, 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 just... yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't move it, Carl didn't. That did itself. I think it Some, good, somebody's, yeah. somebody's having a laugh. Something's happening in this room. What the hell was that, a dog? You alright, John? John? What's up, John? John? I'm fine. John, I'm what's the matter, John? John? Alright, get him out, get him out, get him out, get him out. I'm fine. You're not fine, John. What's wrong with He's cold as f***. He's cold as f***. Just halfway through our time on board the Queen Mary, we took time to reflect on the extraordinary events witnessed in two particular areas. The Queen's Salon had proved anxious, but now room B340 has literally wiped out John and left several of his colleagues worried for his and their welfare. 
We still had over a week remaining on board, and this being most haunted, you just know that we've saved the spine-chilling vest until last. Is there anybody here? That was a door opening. No. John's in there. John's in there tonight. In here. This place is huge. Oh, come on. Somebody go and get Kira. Until next week, sleep tight. I know deep down that this is really going to kick off here. Most Haunted Scariest Pubs, this weekend from 9pm, only on Living TV. Next, we're behind the scenes on the Queen Mary, so hopefully more moving glasses, tight chests and mummies. That was freaky. Next. Next.